When the insurance claims processing people submit claims, those claims need to be routed to people who review the claim and either approve or deny the claim. That's a perfect use case for a staple business process because each claim will have its state stored in the documentary repository and the business process will have manual tasks assigned to users of the claims queue work queue. A stateful process is a pro process or workflow whose state is maintained in the documentary repository. Any process that requires manual tasks as opposed to automatic tasks must be defined as a stateful process. Another thing that we'll do at the end of this section is demonstrate the new XCP Designer 2 process debugger, which was introduced in XCP Designer 2.1. The process debugger allows us to test the design of a process model. We can detect and diagnose errors before deploying the process to a production environment. Debugging the process saves us time because we can resolve problems during the design phase of an end user application instead of having to troubleshoot the problems at runtime. So, in this section of the tutorial, we'll configure a manual business process or workflow to handle the review and approval of new claims. It'll be a two step process containing a few work queue task activities for processing of the claim. A simple condition will be used so that if the first reviewer approves the claim, then a second reviewer is asked to review that also. So in the XCP Navigator, select the Processes tab, then click the green New Process button. For Label, enter Claim Processing. For the Process Can Run in Stateless Mode option, leave it unchecked. That's how you make it a stateful process. Remember this will have some manual tasks, so it must be a stateful process. Then click Finish. So we need to click the Process Properties toolbar button and select the Data tab so we can configure some packages and process variables. Select the Packages node in the left pane and then click the green Add button. For name, enter PKG underscore claim. For type, click the Select button and then select the Claim folder and then click Finish. Ensure that the This is a Mandatory Package option is checked and then click the Apply button at the bottom. Click the green Add button again to add another package. For name, enter a PKG underscore policy. For type, click the Select button, select the Business Policy object, and then click Finish. This time, for the This is a Mandatory Package option, uncheck the box. Then click the Apply button at the bottom. Click the green Add button again to add another package. For name, enter PKG underscore vehicle. For the This is a Mandatory Package option, uncheck the box. For type, click the Select button and select the Vehicle business object. And then click Finish. Now click the Apply button at the bottom. Now in the left pane, Select the Process Variables node, and then click the green Add button to add a process variable. For name, enter V underscore response. For type, we want to select Integer, and then click the Apply button again. Review the data settings by selecting the Process Data node at the top. On the right, there's a table showing the three packages and one process variable. Click OK. In the Layout Canvas, let's slide the end activity over to the right to make more room for our new activities. From the Activities pane on the right, drag a Task Work Queue Task activity onto the canvas to the right of the Initiate activity. Now let's drag a Split activity to the right of the Work Queue Task activity. We need to add another task, work queue task activity to above and to the right of the decision split activity. Now add a flow join activity to finish up the decision split. Use the alignment tools to fix up the alignment and layout as needed. Select the Straight Flow toolbar button and connect the activities to define the flow. Now, select the Multi-Segment Flow tool 
and connect the decision split activity to the work queue task 1 activity. Likewise, connect the work queue task 1 activity to the join activity. And select the normal selection tool from the toolbar. All right. Double click the first work queue task activity to open its activity inspector to configure the activity. Now change the activity name to first approval. For instructions, enter please review the claim and decide whether to approve or deny the claim. Click the work queue tab. For work queue, click the select button and select work queue from a parameter. This means that we're going to get the value of the work queue name from an application parameter. Then click next. Select param underscore claims work queue from the list of application parameters that are of type work queue. Then click finish. Then click OK. Now open the activity inspector for the work queue task 1 activity. Change the name to second approval. And for instructions, enter please review the claim that has been pre-approved and decide whether to approve or deny the claim. Select the Work Queue tab. For Work Queue, click the Select button and select Work Queue from a parameter. This means that we're going to get the value of the Work Queue name from an application parameter. And click Next. Select Param underscore Claims Work Queue from the list of application parameters that are of type Work Queue. Then click Next. If you had a situation where specific skills were required for handling this stage of the workflow, you could add them here. Using the Work Queue Skills option requires additional configuration in DA. So let's click Finish now. Click OK to accept the changes and dismiss the Activity Inspector dialog. Now open the Activity Inspector for the Decision Split activity. Change the name to Pre-Approved? For Perform As, click the Select button and select Repository Owner. This setting of using the repository owner as the performer of the decision split is not essential, but it's a common practice to run automatic steps like this as repository owners so that user permissions don't prevent them from completing. So click Finish. Select the Transition tab, and for when this activity completes, select Select Next Activities Based on Conditions. Click the mouse in the box just to the right of the If clause. Then click the selector button, the dot 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 button. In the top pane, select the variables node. In the bottom pane, select V underscore response. Then click OK. The if condition box shows process.variables.v underscore response. Type equal equal space one after V response to form the condition for if the first approver approves the claim, the V response value will be one and so the process will route the claim to the second approval activity. In the Then Transition box, select Second Approval, and then click OK. Now click in the box at the right of the Else clause. In the Edit Rule dialog, select the Join Transition and click OK. Click OK again to dismiss the Activity Inspector for the pre-approved activity. Now open the Activity Inspector for the Join activity. Change the name to Review Completed. For Perform As, click the Select button and select Repository Owner again, and then click Finish. Now let's select the Trigger tab. For This Activity is Triggered When, select This Number of Input Flows Selected, and set the value to 1. This means that this activity will start if the claim is approved by the second approver or declined by the first. Then click OK to close the Activity Inspector dialog. OK, you're going to really like this. Now that we've configured the process, we can use the Process Debugger to test the logic of the Decision Split condition and the Join trigger. In order to debug a process, XP Designer will first need to connect to a Documentum repository. Select the first approval activity and set a debugging breakpoint on it using the Toggle Breakpoint toolbar button. 
You see the red dot above the activity? That indicates that we now have a breakpoint set at this activity. Now click the Debugger Toolbar button. First, the Debugger Login dialog appears. It needs us to specify which design time environment to use for the debugging session. We configured one of these design time configurations in the Preferences dialog during one of the first sections of this tutorial. Now click OK. Under the Packages node, click the Attach link next to the Package Claim. The Select Package Object dialog appears. Now navigate to and select Concordant and then one of the claims that you want to use during this debugging session. Then click Open. When we're ready, click the Start Workflow button. The workflow will run and then stop on the first approval activity, where we have our breakpoint. Let's make the pane big enough to see all of our debugging information. I'll select the Process Data tab so we can examine the process variables and even set their values to whatever we need them to be to test our conditional splits and so on. In the Variables node, select V underscore response and enter zero, meaning that the task processor user will be denying this claim. Then select the Task Manager tab. This allows us to perform functions of the task, such as Acquire, Reject, and Finish. Click the Acquire button to simulate a task performer manually acquiring a task. Now we can see that we can specify which user to perform this task as. And let's select DM Admin and then click the Acquire button. Now click the green Continue to Next Breakpoint button to continue running the workflow. I believe it's the same as F9. With a value of 0 in the vResponse variable, the decision split directs the flow to the review completed activity and eventually through to the end activity. Now click the rerun debug button. This time for the vResponse process variable, set the value to 1, simulating the task processor user as approving this claim in the first approval. Then click start workflow. We need to be careful when changing process data in the debug view. If you don't press the Enter key after making a change like this one, the new value won't be saved and you'll experience confusion as the workflow will not flow as you expected. We need to remember to press the Enter key between making a value change and selecting another variable. Click the Acquire button again, select DM Admin for the Acquire As user, and click the Acquire button. Now click the green Continue to Next Breakpoint button to continue running the workflow. Remember, we'll be continuing with the V response process variable set to the value as if the first approval user approved the claim. This will cause the pre-approved decision split to direct the flow to the second approval activity. So why did it stop in the second approval activity when there was no breakpoint set? Well, it's because it was defined as a manual task. So we need to click the Acquire button, acquire the task as DM Admin again, and then watch it continue the workflow through the review completed and then to the end activity. So that's pretty neat, huh? You can imagine how much time and troubleshooting that's going to save us all. Alright, when we're done debugging a process, we click the Exit Debug Session button and the debugger pane closes and ends the debug mode. Let's save and close the Claim Processing tab and get ready to build the task list user interface for the users.